We are still, I am still live broadcasting from the studio in my, or I should say our house, the house I share with my fiance Huli, who edits the podcast, the interviews, which you can find on the videos section. Uh, this is the live section, however. This is where all the live stuff happens, uh, and uh, it's very different. This is more scandals and news and things, whereas the pre-recorded videos are mostly with cult defectors. I'm going to do some stuff on UFOs and believers and things like that. As we progress, I've just done two lives, one about Leah Remini, from, the actress from The King of Queens suing Scientology, and another about uh, Dan Wooten and the proof that he is the person responsible for doing awful things uh, to humiliate uh, his co-workers and things like that. Uh, so make sure to check those out after or before, quite possibly. Make sure to hit the like button here as well um, because it will help to spread the video out. And this is big news because I put something out last night about Meghan and Harry. For a long time, there has been a lot of people talking about how awful they were to work with because I... <sighs> You know, look, I get it that some people love these guys. A lot of people hate those guys, Meghan and Harry. And it's very complicated and difficult. And the ultimate issue here was that Meghan and Harry didn't do any work. Okay, so whether you think, oh, it was the royal family's fault, it's Meghan and Harry's fault, whoever, whatever. Spotify came out and they rarely ever do this kind of thing and actually said she was a nightmare to work with. They actually said that Meghan uh, did no work, that Harry had no ideas. These are not people, they, they called them effing grifters, didn't they? These are not people who are to be taken seriously. These are not people who left the royal family to go and show that they could be like the rest of us and really work hard and grift for a living. They screwed that up royally. I've said this before, they had Americans on their side before and they lost them because one thing America will not stand for, in my opinion, is slackers. They just won't. The American dream is founded on working extremely hard. New money, as the Gatsby story goes, uh, new money by working hard. Anybody can get rich. It doesn't have to be a king or queen or whatever. They had such a great opportunity to show the world they could be those people and they screwed it up royally. Yeah. So they did. They messed it all up. Spotify, Netflix, everything coming out from them for so long from these companies was suggesting they did not work hard enough. They were paid $100 million by Netflix for the documentary series where they just sat on the sofa talking nonsense. They were paid $20 million by Spotify for making a podcast series and $20 million for a ridiculous book that Harry didn't even write. This is the kinds of money that I can't even imagine. Most of you can't even imagine having. I've just written a book. It's out next year. I'm not trying to publicize it now because there's no point. But the point is, I spent two years on it. I've put everything into it. My heart and soul into it. The amount of money I'll get for that, it won't even, you know, maybe it will, maybe it'll do really well, but most books don't even break even, right? The vast majority of books do not even get the money that, that was used to pay for them in the first place. And every now and then there is a book like Harry's, like uh, Justin Bieber's, that gets so many sales that it, it props up the rest of the industry, Harry Potter, whatever. Um, for his book, he was paid 20 million, didn't even have to write it. Think of that luxury. Think of that luxury. The podcast, Megan Wright, I've been doing a podcast for three years, didn't earn a penny in the first year, not a cent or a penny or whatever. And I worked nonstop, worked loads of different jobs, copywriting online, doing whatever. And by the way, this is not my sob story. Every single one of you has a story like this, I'm sure. The vast majority of you do anyway. You have to work your bottoms off just to be able to put food on the table, to have any semblance of a career. That's why I always reference the part in Harry's book, Spare, where he sat in Eton, looking out the window, going, oh, those lucky people, they don't know how good they've got it because he's got security that are a bit invasive. He has no idea what it is to have to put food on the table. And they made a huge mistake by playing the victimhood Olympics with the rest of us because they were never going to win that game. That podcast, like I say, most of us podcasters don't earn in the first year at all. And when you do start earning, it's really not very much. Now, and, and, and I'm talking about the top, top podcasters, right? What about the average podcaster? What about people who work so hard? I know so many of them who've been going for five, 10 years who still don't earn a penny. They lose money from making their podcast. Megan, first time, never made a podcast, turns up $20 million. Here you go. You got any ideas? Not really. Right. 10 episodes is all she did, right? Took me 10 weeks to do 10 episodes. They did 10 episodes. It took them about two years to do that. Uh, I might, you know, most of us, we start, you do an episode a week. So in my first 10 weeks, I'd done 10 episodes. I now do three a week. 
Uh, she did 10 in like two years. She didn't have to produce them, didn't have to invite guests on, choose the guests, choose the topics, certainly didn't have to uh, edit them, didn't even have to speak to a lot of the people who were interviewed on it by all accounts, only to the big, glitzy, glamorous, famous people. That's what she is known for doing. This is very frustrating for a lot of people. People wonder why I have a go at Megan, uh, what, what my issue is, and they go, oh, you must be some sort of right-wing whatever. I was being accused of being a big lefty smear campaign just in the last one when I was talking about Dan Wooten. The fact is you need to be able to criticise people without being associated with a tribe on the right or left. It's just this is a person who I thought was very hypocritical because – she wanted to tell us that she was nothing like the royal family. She wanted to criticize the royal family. Nothing wrong with that. You should criticize people. I, I believe that. You should be in an open and free society. You criticize people. You hold them to account and you hold the royal family. I mean, that is the, the creme de la creme. So if you can't hold them to account, who can? So by all means, do it, right? Do you Have a go at, at them. However, if you're going to do that, don't then come out and do no work and moan about your victimhood and how difficult everything is for you all the time because that turned everyone off them so quickly. That was just the biggest turn off. It was awful. So did the podcast. And anyway, the point I was going to make actually was that yesterday, suddenly loads of magazines and newspapers were all being fed the same story by a so-called exclusive source. I did a video about that last night, all saying Harry and Meghan aren't separating. They're actually fine and very happy and everything's great. I talked about that, but what I didn't talk about was there was another article um, that was going on about Megan now blaming Spotify for the failure of her podcast. So I thought, I also saw a tweet that, that was about this and I thought it was really interesting uh, <clears throat> by a guy who I, I didn't know of before called Saqib Ahmed, um, who's got a YouTube channel as well. So check him out, Saqib Ahmed. Um, and he did this tweet that went a little bit a little bit viral. He did a bit of a thread on it, and it was really good, I thought. So let me just, can I just pull this up? I don't know. Wait, hang on, hang on. Put the messages down to, wait, hang on. I've got to protect some of these people. That mm, nothing to do with it in case they've said anything. Now, he said, because uh, about, about the allegations that Spotify ruined it all or whatever that's it's Spotify's fault, these are some good points from Saqib. And it's a lot of the stuff I've been saying as well. One, Megan was given access to big names with their large fan base. For example, Serena Williams, Mariah Carey, Issa Rae and Trevor Noah, which makes it easier to get ratings. I mean, yeah, if you've got those kinds of guests, imagine that starting out your first episodes. Those are the guests you can get on. Most people start out and like, there's no one, no, no one famous. Even now, I've been going three years. I've got one of the biggest podcasts now in the UK. I'd never be able to get Serena Williams on. <sighs> Uh, two, she's a terrible interviewer with the constant need to one-up her guest, which was evident in the case of Serena Williams. I thought that as well. I, I, I listened to that and thought exactly that. And unable to take even a mild joke, brackets, diva joke. That is in reference to Mariah Carey saying that Megan was a bit of a diva and Megan's entire world fell apart and she thought she can't um, enjoy Mariah Carey anymore. Three, she is not organic. People can sense that. You may be able to pull that off in 10 minutes interview with Access Media, but in podcasts, hard to do so. Duchess did not attempt to be relatable and would constantly interrupt folks, making it hard to listen. Four, the topics such as labels or gender roles are more slash more or less settled. These are not the, um, not the 90s. Fair to say Megan is stuck back in time. Not an interesting conversation popped off or became viral. It's absolutely true. It's a really good point. I mean, this this was stuff from like 10, 20 years ago, Me Too and all these things, let's avoid labels. Five, Spotify went out of their way to put Megan's podcast with its flagship product, Joe Rogan Experience, even when there is no comparison. We all saw the marketing machine behind it, the articles and billboards. She could even couldn't pull the numbers, literally an alley op by Spotify. Um, I suppose that's six. She is not a natural, even with so many interesting guests. She had to make it about her, which is fine, but that only works when you are interesting. Megan is not one of those people, not a single interesting hobby or any event was brought up, only victimhood. It's hard to listen to folks complain, even harder when they are in the most privileged positions. That goes back to my point about Harry at Eton complaining about how easy everyone else has it. And my other point about when you've got those kinds of riches, people don't mind so much until you start 
bringing up victimhood because that's something the rest of us can compete with you with. Uh, and most of you guys, most of us would win against Meghan or Harry by a long distance if we were talking about a victimhood Olympics. The last point here, I don't know who was the target audience, women in their early 40s or mothers. There was no consistent strategy to target those people, only herself to be blamed. So I think that's a fair point. Um, and this was in, in response to New York Post put out Spotify to blame for Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's podcast debacle. Well, I mean, also the fact that it took two years and they did no work and were called effing grifters, you know. Anyway, this guy, uh, Saqib, rightly says, again, to clarify, I don't have any skin in the game. I am indifferent, not involved in any fandoms. I am objective here. Obviously, I am not the target audience, but I do know what a good podcast is. I listen to them daily often with female hosts many times, because I know people will be attacking him saying, oh, you just don't want female hosts. Um, so I thought that was really interesting and, and really astute from Saqib, really. I, I like these. Tw I like Twitter for threads and things. I like when they do these things. And he put up some great little... Uh, I don't even know where he got them from because it wasn't on Apple, it was just Spotify. So I guess that, that's, where he, well, that's where he got some of these reviews from. But uh, let's, let's look at some of these reviews then. So one out of 10 from Froling... Uh, empty. The podcast turned out to be a horrific endeavour that did not inspire or give hope, but rather degraded others and appeared to be Megan attempting to settle scores by hiding behind other women. Taking every label as a negative will do nothing but make you look petty and provide more evidence that the stereotypes you're trying to combat are actually honest assessments. Rise above another person's opinion or label of you as a woman and find the positive in it for yourself and keep your head up. Stop acting like everyone else's opinion or insults define who you are and how others see you. One overcomes a stereotype by living a life that provides evidence that the opinion or insult is untruthful. One does not overcome a stereotype by surrendering their integrity through petty attacks on other women or men who may see your perception completely differently. That's a great review. And that was just April, so that was just a, a few months ago now. Um, and that's a great little review there. Let's go to the next one. Lynn Mildner. What I like about these reviews is these are people who've taken it seriously. These, these are clearly not people uh, who, who have made an effort to, you know, just, just say horrible things about the podcast. One out of 10, Lynn Mildner. Most podcasts feature people who are well um, known to each other or who have a topic in common, so converse easily. Not so with this one. I found the friendship in quotation marks, marks, marks <laughs> with Serena Williams didn't feel warm. The Mariah Carey episode was interesting because Megan came across as a bit of a try-hard wannabe and it only highlighted the gulf between the profile and importance of the two women. Mariah was the star and rather than let her shine, Megan tried to be on her level and failed. After that, they got more rambling and it seemed the subject of the stereotypes, brackets, they are not archetypes, seemed rather artificially shoehorned into the narrative. Had she kept the format looser and just chatted, they might have been less clunky, but it felt amateurish and contrived to me. I think that's a really good point as well. I really like the, what that person's saying. And here's the thing, like I know I look, everyone says it about their own job. Uh, I'm sure you guys, how many of you guys have had this where like you explain your job to your family or your friends and you can tell they think you don't really do very much or that your job's easy or whatever it might be. And we're all a little bit, uh, a little bit sensitive about that, aren't we? And for me, I'm a podcaster. That's my job. I suppose I'm a YouTuber now, really, because that's where most of my views come. But I'm a podcaster. Uh, and it's, look, it's, you know, it's, I don't think it's the hardest job in the world. There are people who have to sort of dive into sewers and things for their work. There are people who have to work manual labor 20 hours a day. There are some really difficult jobs out there, ones that are not well paid as they should be. But it's, it's also not an easy job. And it requires uh, a certain deft touch when, when interviewing people. And I knew from the beginning that if I made the show about me, uh, it was not going to be interesting. Um, and that is difficult. I think it's very difficult to understand the difference between things that are interesting for me and things that are interesting for my viewers. And a lot of people who are not podcasters, for example, will often talk to me like friends of mine in conversation and say, hey, we should make a podcast about our lives. Isn't that interesting? And I've always said like, no, no, that's interesting to us, right? That's not interesting to other people. So people were not interested by Megan just constantly. You've got Mariah Carey there. You've got Serena Williams in front of you. Listen to what they've got to say. I don't mind a little interjection every now and then. Oh, I see what you mean. I had a funny story happen to me like once or twice. 
But to try and put yourself, and I said this from the start when I first listened to that Serena Williams episode, I remember saying, this is, this is bonkers. She's got one of the most famous faces on the planet sitting in front of her and she's just talking about herself and trying to put herself on the same level as Serena Williams, talking about how the two of them shared ambition and that the patriarchy uh, didn't allow for women to have ambition. But she never set out her stall. She never said what her ambition was apart from to marry a prince. So we know what Serena Williams's ambition was and she achieved it fantastically. Don't know what Meghan did. So, and she never really says either what she did. So I liked that review. I really did. Um, I really thought it was interesting because it's not just me. You know, a lot of people were listening in and going, she's just making this about herself. She's not acting, she's using this as a vehicle to show how wonderful she is. And unfortunately, we see through that. We see through that. And it annoys me that she thinks she can just be a podcast host and take $20 million for it. I'd have to work the rest of my life to earn that kind of money from this podcast. Several lives. Most of us would have to work many lives to reach that kind of money that she got for two years of doing nothing and then turning up 10 times and doing some nonsense chat with people. Here's another one. The last thing women need is amateurs. And no, this isn't a hate review. So another one who's trying to go, look, I don't want to be a hater here. Father Fruit, who gave one out of 10. There is an art in hosting a podcast. It's not having a chat with your buddy. It's not having a monologue where you get to vent your views and interrupt the guest. Your job is to make your guests feel comfortable. Encourage them to talk about themselves. An amateur relates what the guest says to herself and then goes on a diatribe leaving the poor guest in the dust. The audience came to listen to learn more about the guest. That was the contract. A podcast host is in breach of contract when she uses the podcast as an excuse to give her views. What's the difference between a podcast and a straight interview? The podcast should have give and take conversation. To put it simply, the host says a little something to elicit a response from the guest and then feeds off of what the guest says. If the conversation gets dry, then the host can initiate a new topic. The host should also channel the guest to talk about what the host believes the audience wants to hear. Unfortunately, Megan was not trained to be a podcast host. On her first podcast, she went on for 11 minutes and gave a speech. She repeated stories about her childhood, such as the dish soap commercial, which has already been covered many times. And it's just boring. I can't hear that anymore of this thing that probably wasn't even true or I don't even know what about when she was a kid and did whatever she did. Oh, how do I get back onto that? And here's one. Fails to deliver anything of meaning. Archetypes is a podcast series hosted by Meghan Markle, the Duchess of Sussex, who claims to examine and subvert the labels that seek to limit women. However, the podcast is nothing but a self-indulgent and superficial attempt to boost her own image and relevance by associating herself with celebrities, historians and experts who have little to do with the topics she pretends to care about. The podcast is full of cliches, platitudes and contradictions. Meghan talks about breaking stereotypes, but she re reinforces them by choosing guests who fit into neat categories of race, class and profession. She talks about empowering women, but she patronises them by speaking on their behalf and ignoring their diverse experiences and perspectives. She talks about being authentic, but she comes across as fake and scripted, using a fake British accent and dropping names of famous people she knows. So again, it's that same sort of just fakeness we're seeing. And these are well-written reviews, aren't they? As far as reviews go, these are, these are pretty literary. I'm pretty impressed. These are just, that's Stephen Skins there. I don't know, that's a user who's just put that together. And I think that was really uh, quite beautifully put. And it, it really um, emphasizes what a lot of us in the industry felt when this came out. Uh, and then we were relieved to see that other people felt it as well. And that, you know, the Spotify, the people working there were calling them grifters. So it's absolutely mad. Now, do you want to see what the, um, this is Daily Mail, what the actual experts have to say. James Marriott is a podcast reviewer. He's also, he happens to be one of my favourite, favourite writers at the Times. This is in the Daily Mail, though, that they've they've sort of put together a few reviews. He gave it one star out of five. Now, James Marriott is very mild-mannered and uh, tempered. He, he really is uh, very subtle. Um, he crafts these beautiful articles for the Times that don't always go one way or the other so he he and he he said himself that he's not a snob he's you know he could easily have liked this podcast i think um 
And he wrote, The Duchess of Sussex's almost entirely preposterous new podcast, Archetypes, promises to rip apart the boxes women have been placed into for generations. On the evidence of the first episode, an interview with Serena Williams, it won't really do this at all. The podcast is a tastefully soundtracked parade of banalities, absurdities and self-aggrandizing Californian platitudes. The effect of all the tinkly music and vapid conversation is to make you feel you've been locked in the relaxation room of a wellness spa with an unusually self-involved yoga instructor. Even those sympathetic to Megan's plight, and I had once thought I might be one of those people, will find that the full hour of an episode of Archetypes will put them in an unusually grumpy mood. Wow. Celia Walden at the Daily Telegraph said Megan's podcast is just another way she can talk about herself. The podcast is an interview with this inspirational sporting figure in name only. That's Serena Williams. If the rest of the season is anything like the premiere, what we're really going to be listening into week after week is Megan interviewing herself. Even the anecdote about how Megan first met her supposed interviewee at a 2010 Super Bowl party is somehow turned into self-aggrandizement aggrandizement, sorry, spotting Serena heading towards someone. Megan wondered who on earth could have sparked this special woman's interest and, oh my goodness, it was her. Every woman has had a girlfriend like Megan, the one who turns every confidence back to them and hijacks every distressing anecdote with one of their own. Only theirs is longer drawn out, more distressing. Steer Pike, the spectator, said Megan's Archetypes podcast is really all about her. Another thing there. Harry has been shoved into the background natch so that Megan can concentrate on talking about herself. Sorry, Mr. S meant to say on the labels that try to hold women back. Labels don't try to do anything, of course. They are labels. But we should never let common sense get in the way of rich women talking about female empowerment. The first guest is Serena Williams, but tennis enthusiasts who tune in might be disappointed. The show is, in fact, all about Megan since it takes 11 minutes for Serena to barely get a word in edgeways. It's hard to believe that it took 28 people, including eight ex executive producers, to make the episode, plus Megan herself, who is also listed as an executive producer in the credits. Of course, she is. It just frustrates me so much. And this, I, I admit totally, by the way, that I'm particularly frustrated and bitter about this more than anything else because I'm a podcaster. But I know that people who are documentary make, well, I'm that as well, are annoyed by her, her uh, or biographers are annoyed by Harry. It's just not on a lot of this. Uh, I'm going to look to see if there's any sort of questions and things I should be getting to. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see. I'm just checking, just checking for some questions up here. Um People asking if Obama was born in Kenya and if I'm a part-time... Oh, are you a... Andrew, was Obama born in... I don't... I don't even... Who cares where Obama... I couldn't give a monkeys where he's born. Who gives a... Who cares where anyone's born? Where they... I can't think of a less interesting thing. I, don't, I, I cannot. I honestly... I... Imagine if there were like 50 planets out there... And people are worrying about where, oh, but remember planet Earth, right? Which one, which country was East? Well, they say it was the States, but he was actually born in, couldn't, I just don't know why that's a thing. I don't know. People are ridiculous, I've got to say. Um, and you know what? I'm going to, I'll lose a lot of subscribers to this. I quite like Obama. So there you go. Um, it doesn't mean I know, I don't even know much about his politics. I just thought he was all right. I just thought he was all right. Don't mind. I'm not a fan of the current one. I don't have to be. Don't like, uh, you know. Um, didn't she? Well, this is it. Sc uh, Scotchy Mario says, I never did listen to a Meghan Markle podcast, but didn't she just want to name drop? Tell us how great she was. I've caught snippets. That's exactly what it was. Um, I just, <laughs> I like Ray J's one as well. I'll just say, too well written. I'll just say, that's shite. <laughs> I like that. It was, it really was just. Um, mad i couldn't believe what i was listening to with the serena williams one the fact that she just kept saying they were both ambitious or oh, what you're talking about cindy tenhagen thank you so much for the super sticker do really appreciate that it really helps the channel to keep going lemon character moving in excitement is is how i'm seeing it on this program i'm on i think it must be a a lemon character moving in excitement. Thank you for that. I do appreciate that. Moonrunner1973 asks, Markle rhymes with fartle. Ever been fartled? I'm sorry to tell you, Moonrunner. Not only have I never been fartled, but fartle does not rhyme with Markle. It's not even that close. So no. No to everything you're, you're saying there. There you go. I'm just still looking. Uh, people just talking about, you know, privileged people talking about victimhood and all stuff like that. I've got no problem with rich people. I've got no problem with rich people complaining about their lives and things like that. 
what I don't want to hear is that their lives are worse than everyone else's and to not appreciate. You know, I understand there are difficulties in Meghan's life. There are difficulties in everyone's life. Money does not shelter you from difficulties. There are there are difficulties in Prince Harry's life. Of course there are. What happened to him as a child with his mum was awful. Awful. And we're allowed to say that and still say, but come on, mate. You've got to show some semblance of understanding that you... Um, have had a lot of things very easy and he never ever seems to ever suggest that so there you go um let's see i'm just looking at questions 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 don't be so rude andrew she only asked a question was that about the way where obama lives or was born i don't mean to be rude look i wanted to ask questions and she's welcome on the channel she's absolutely welcome and she's probably fantastic and wonderful. And I'm sorry if it did come across rude. I meant that more at, because I've heard that question so often. And I can't look, I used to live in Berlin, um, East, East, you know, East Germany, and they had the Stasi and things like that. And there's something as a bit of a, I suppose I'm towards libertarian a little bit, okay, and a centrist and all that stuff. And something about you know, but where were you really born? It makes me shiver. And I don't care if you're asking that about Trump, if you're asking it about Obama, if you're asking, whatever side, I couldn't care less about sides. I always say this, I want to reiterate it. Everyone's welcome to their side. I don't judge them, whatever. I don't want to know like, hmm, but what, what's your genetics and who's who's behind the real, that kind of thing just, just gives me, an, gives me ick, gives me a bit of ick. Uh, and, and it winds me up. Doesn't mean that the person who asked it is a bad person or that I disagree with them. And, you know, good luck to them. I'm happy they're here. Just that particular question. Um, that's how I answered it. Uh, do you think, Easy B asks, Megan actually thought the podcast was good? Yeah, because I had, um, I can't remember his name now, narcissist expert on to talk about Megan a while ago. Uh, and it was interesting to, you know, <coughs> that narcissism. We're talking about Dan Wooten in the last episode, the guy, New Zealand presenter, who's now being, you know, he was just... He's being accused of all sorts of things uh, on his, uh, you know, scandal, basically. But he's still reporting the news with a smile on his face as if nothing happened. And I think these narcissists just have an amazing view of themselves. So I think Megan probably did think this was wonderful because she had the chance to edit it afterwards. She had the chance after the first episode to think, you know what? I did talk about myself quite a lot there. Maybe the next episode I will actually ask the amazing guest that I was extremely fortunate to have on something of themselves but she didn't. Episode after episode, all about her. And you have to think she loved it. And we all have a bias where, you know, you might read some of the uh, um, negative reviews and, and, and you just sort of ignore them and oh, maybe I'll just focus on the positive. Some of us do the opposite. I, I often put up the ones that have a go at me. I fixate on the negative and all that stuff. Uh, no, this is wrong, Kathleen. I don't know how I've gotten to talk about this. Kathleen McKeithen. Andrew, if you were an American, you would care very much where Obama was born. If he weren't born in the United States, he would not have been eligible to... Who gives a crap? Who cares? Was he a good president? Did you agree with his stuff? No? Don't vote for him. Who cares? That's it. Maybe he was a terrible president. I don't even know. Maybe you're all sitting there, Americans, going, hang on, you don't know the awful things. Maybe he did awful things. Maybe he's a bad guy. I don't care where he was born. Just... I do. how can you care you know why you care you care because like all of us you are tribal and you're looking for things that you know and i think if you thought he was a bad president you are perfectly allowed to and, and i make arguments as to why he was bad i've heard plenty of them i've heard plenty of arguments that he got nothing done he was useless he engaged in wars and things did awful things with the drones go with those things who cares where he was born my god if I was American, I'd care. Sorry, I've gotten wound up by that, and I shouldn't do, because you're just asking a question, and you're entitled to do so. You're absolutely entitled, and that is fair enough. Um, I just disagree with the whole premise, and I, I usually see both sides of things, and that is one where... And I, I even see, but I'm not like... Uh, you know, some people are anti-immigration, and I think, fine, I get that. You know, it is very diff It's easy for, like, rich white people or middle-class people to be like, oh, look at you being anti-immigration, and those are not the people who are affected by immigration. So there are plus and minuses to all these things, and I get it. I'm not one of these people who doesn't get the the nuances and the difficulties of, of those kinds of things. But I just think if you don't like Obama, just say you don't like Obama. I don't know why you've got to worry about where the hospital he was born in was. Like, don't, you know, nonsense. That's just what I think. Tom Demand, do you think Megan reads these reviews herself, and how do you think she'd react? 
I think she just has to have a thing where she just goes, no, no, that was an idiot. Each time, over and over. Oh, they're all out to get me. And she has like an easy cover story there. Like the, the, the mitigating factor is, well, obviously they all just love the royal family. They're obsessed with the royal family. We've heard Harry and Meghan say, oh, the British press are just so awful. They're, so, they, they're just particularly difficult. So we moved to America. Well, America hates you too now, now that you've been there long enough. And that idea that there's something about the British press, I mean, they're absolutely right that the British press uh, at their worst can be horrific uh, sensationalist propaganda, uh, the paparazzi, the way that they attack and hound celebrities. But firstly, what about America as well? It's not a competition, by the way. It's just every country has these people in them. Uh, and we saw what the press did to Britney Spears in America. We've seen what the American press have done to all sorts of people. They're no better or worse than the British press. The idea that they were is ridiculous and bordering on xenophobic. I'm not sure in which direction. Uh, but the suggestion that people are somehow different, they're not. Um, but also the, the word paparazzi, it comes from Italian, doesn't it? Because of the Italian paps. I mean, it is everywhere. The French paps killed Diana. Like, this is this is paparazzi. Um, and it was just that, but that goes to show the kind of mental gymnastics that, that Megan is able to perform to make herself feel like, oh, no, no, they're all just against me. And there's no doubt that she will just continue to do so. That's what I think. Uh, Marianne says Andrew's getting punchy. I know because you've probably not seen me. I don't mean to be punchy. I, again, I apologize again to anyone, uh, you know, whatever. What's this? You engaged in birtherism last week. Own it. Maybe apologize. What birtherism? Who did I say about last week? I say so much stuff that it's impossible to keep track of it. Who was I worrying about who was living and being born I don't think I did, Superstellar, but maybe I'm wrong. I'm happy to hear what you're, what you're talking about. Do you love Beyonce too, Andrew? Um, I don't know very much about Beyonce, but uh, good luck to her. Uh, I don't know what that question's about. I'm sure there is something to it. Um, let's see, I'm scrolling down to simply... Uh, no, reading out these different things. Uh my testosterone's through you know you know what it is vincent amor it's not my testosterone i'm just shattered um because it's my third hour in a row uh da, da, da. oh some people are saying some nice things I, I don't put the nice things up because then it looks like i'm being megan going mm -hmm, mm -hmm. oh look at all the nice things people are saying about me um serena has talent megan has talons says amber eyes i like that i don't know what talons are are they like shoes the back of the back of the shoes aren't they um thanks for the super sticker creepy creepy is always helping a rainbow clapperboard with the words behind the scenes again that's all i see i don't get to see the actual animation but that is funny um let's scroll down uh scrolling down Oh, Leonie Mary says, have you seen videos of M. Megan being interviewed alongside another suit star? Megan's face when the questions weren't directed at herself. Megan's a nightmare narcissist, awful woman. That's really interesting. And that's the point. Again, a lot of people say she was famous anyway. She didn't need Prince Harry. But I always say, like, come on, like, you know, how many of the skins, act skins, suits actors have you even heard of? Or the skins actors. Have you heard of the skins actors? Uh, it might have been H.G. Tudor, Hannah Fian. That's a good point. Um, the, the person who was a narcissist expert, it was either him or Richard Grannon. They both came on and both discussed Megan. So I am interested. I can't remember which of them said that she will just be thinking, no, no, I'm brilliant. I'm brilliant. I'm brilliant all the time, uh, which is very possible. Let's see. I'm scrolling down here. People are saying it was H.G. Tudor, but it could have been Richard Grannon. So I'm not sure because I had them both on to discuss all these things. Uh, let's see. Scrolling down. Um, Obama has a chef position open, grain of mustard seed. I've seen that story. That is dodgy. That is dodgy and something, you know, who knows what happened. That's the chef who uh, drowned, but then they said he couldn't swim. But then there's footage of him swimming. So what is going on there? Doesn't mean I care where he was born, though. Um, <laughs> Harry de Monte Cristo. Do you think Meghan has delusions of intelligence and delusions of grandeur? Absolutely. And I've said this before as well, that... The thing with Meghan is it's an you know status right. You get rich. Well now what? Harry born rich. What what do you do now? Where do you go from there? You need to improve your status. Well you can get more and more money, which they are doing. But you also want to go. Hey, maybe I'm a bit of an intellect. And I've had I've had it said to me by insiders. Don't remember even who that was. That Harry 
<clears throat> definitely does now have these delusions of grandeur and delusions of intelligence. Um, he definitely, since the book came out, now thinks of himself as a bit of an auteur, auteur, even though he didn't write the bloody book. That's what's so frustrating. But he started to feel like he's a bit of a literary whatever he is. They started to feel that they're quite culture and familiar with the arts and quite on the scene and stuff like that. And that's a big part of it. Uh, and I think that is what they call the... Um, Oh, what's it called? Dunning Kruger effect, where the, the people who know the least about things are uh, actually. Uh, hang on, I'm seeing another mad thing. Actually, know the least, typically. Andrew, you platformed a racist conspiracy theorist just as Trump did with Obama. Do you regret it? Are the Sussex children real? Was Obama. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> I didn't platform them. I didn't platform them at all. I said that there are people out there who believe that they didn't have the children, that Meghan faked having the children. That's nothing to do with like caring about the race of a child or if they're foreign and things like that. And also, I didn't say I agreed with it. I said there are loads and loads of people out there who think that for some reason and that it wasn't enough to convince me, but I understand that they want to look into that. And that's important to them because it would suggest that Meghan then is only interested in... Um, that in faking having a child so that if they were to get divorced, which all the rumours were suggesting they might do, then she would still take, uh, you know, a lot of the money that on, on Harry's estate. I couldn't care less what country they're from, though. What a, that's ridiculous, that comment. I, I, it's absolutely, and I didn't platform them. I don't, I don't think that's true. I think she did have the baby. Uh, but I don't really care. So there you go. Um, still, God, there's too many comments. Uh... Let's see. Uh, let's see. Scroll. I can't believe. Yeah, I don't know how this turned into like a thing about Obama. Someone who I know fairly little about and care fairly fairly little about. As Hannah Fien says, how did Obama even come out? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, uh, no, fair enough, Kathleen. You're only trying to explain why it was unlawful for him to have run, but I don't care about the law. Come on. I care about, you know, how many times is the law been, you know, we don't take, well, we do take direction from the law, but uh, there you go. Right, I'm scrolling down some to find some more questions. Andrew's verging on rage. Yeah. I don't really get angry like that. I just sort of say stuff. Oh, no, everyone. Lena's un Anukut's unsubscribed. Oh, no. That's a shame, isn't it? Ah, oh, there you go. Um people are always this is not a cult people are always welcome to unsubscribe i don't i don't mind uh i'd, I'd rather you do if you're not gonna enjoy and watch this stuff uh let's see um i'm looking for more pictures and things lovely nosferatu andrew take a deep breath and hit the weights nosferatu's been with us since the very beginning when i had about one subscriber and he's still here Question, Catherine Fee, don't you think the royals killed Diana? I don't think so, but maybe. I'm never one who, who really goes for conspiracies. That's why the whole birtherism thing about Meghan, I don't really go for that. But I, I, it's important that people do question and challenge things because often conspiracy theories do turn out to be true. Watergate was one of them, for example. Um, that guy you're not supposed to mention on YouTube uh, who had an island where he was doing awful things, um, you know, that was true in the end as well a lot of conspiracy theories do turn out to be true and you need people to be looking out for them i don't really go for them maybe that's cowardly of me i don't really know uh but i just think too many people would have to stay quiet for a lot of these and it just seems like oh, i can't see that so i don't think the royals killed diana uh i can see why people do think that uh i think it was just the paps were chasing her and it was a very very sad thing that happened um unfortunately let's uh scroll down oh, apparently talons are claws because talon i think wasn't that in spanish or french i can't remember i think it was french for um um high heels <clears throat> or just heels i don't know um scrolling down for some questions uh goji berry if you are foreign born you cannot be american present that is the rule who cares though just get on with it like, I, just, I just don't know why you'd focus on that. It was years ago. And just worry about his bad policies, if you want. Complain about that. Maybe I'm annoyed because I'm foreign-born and I want to be president one day. Maybe that's what it is. Would you object to me? 
Okay, I'm not supposed to put weird things. Okay, because I want to move away from this topic. But last week, Andrew Gold indulged in a far, far, far right and anti-Semitic conspiracy theory that such children are not real. Tr Donald Trump did the same to Obama. It's called birthism. How could it be anti-Semitic? I'm Jewish. And I'm always talking about anti-Semitism. Because I hate it. And a lot of conspiracy theories are. And so, I don't know what that's got to do with it, though. That is bizarre. Should I be offended now? Because I'm Jewish. I should be offended by you, Superstella. There are some real nutcases out there, unfortunately. Um, gosh. I had like, you know, I had a bar mitzvah and everything. I platformed anti-Semitism. What has that got to do with Harry and the kids? So bizarre, some people. I don't know. I think they're just very sad and, and maybe lonely and I don't know. Um, <clears throat> what's this question? Gold cat. Why do people keep snobbing for people who were born into a position that not even their parents had to work to maintain or achieve? What does snobbing mean in that sense? I guess it means why why are people so like nice to the people that they didn't have to work to maintain or achieve? Look, it's a difficult one, right? And we can get into the philosophy of how life and capitalism works and everything, can't we? But you know, if you work, if you do work really hard and amass a lot of money, and then you have kids, and you want your kids to have a bit of an easier life and to relax while also learning lessons along the way, you can't blame parents for wanting to do that with their kids. I do get that, um, and I also think like those kids didn't choose to grow up rich or whatever. I just think the problem is when they don't recognise it and they act like Megan, and then they get all the virtue from the left and all these things as well. That's when it's really frustrating. I think, right. I'm scrolling down. Um, <laughs> still some nutcases saying I don't care about the law. I don't care about the law. My morality exists outside of the law. From In almost all cases, it coincides with the law, uh, but not always. There are, there are plenty of laws I don't agree with and plenty of things I think should be illegal that maybe aren't. And I'm sure you guys are the same. You don't just let... Uh, you just don't you don't let like the police inform you of what your morality should be surely moon's a balloon one says is hg tudor hugh grant he is not hugh grant and the reason i know that is because i have spoken to him on the phone a couple of times and when his voice isn't made a bit changed because he changes his voice in his videos and he doesn't sound that much like hugh grant secondly He's clearly masking some sort of northern or at least Midlands accent that he has that Hugh Grant certainly does not have. And thirdly, when I have called him, and I don't think I don't think, don't think he'd mind me saying this because it doesn't exactly exactly give away his whereabouts, but he's only a couple of hours ahead, uh, so he's somewhere in Europe, and Hugh Grant is not there. So H.G. Tudor is not Hugh Grant. Paddy, the theatre dog, question: Do you think conspiracy theories are facts twisted to extreme? So no one believes them. Some are, and some are not. Flat Earth is not a fact twisted to the extreme, is it? Uh, there are plenty of them that are just bonkers, but I'm sure some are true. And I get what you're saying. Yeah, people make them so extreme that no one will believe them, and maybe there is an element of truth in them. But uh, there you go. Scrolling down more. Um, let's see... Let's see. Oh, gosh, everyone's talking about Obama. Oh, maybe people will make me president. That's good. Are you born in Britain, Andrew, says Peter Smith. I was born in uh, Britain. Uh, as were my parents and my parents' parents and so on. Polly Parrott. You could never be president of the United States, Andrew, but Nicole Kidman could be. Was she born in the States? She's Australian. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, <clears throat> Wise Angels asked me about Michael Barrymore outside the UK. You won't know about him. I don't. I haven't actually seen that, but he is a presenter with a very dodgy past uh, and history, and I haven't seen that. I'm going to check that out in a bit. Um, <laughs> people are asking about reptilians and stuff. I'm not going to get into that with Joe Biden, Sleepy Joe, as they call him. Um, oh man, it's just too much there's too much mad stuff it's too much we were talking about megan's mad podcast uh too many comments scroll down yeesh well oh as peter says i could be prime minister 
Wouldn't that be a hoot? Look, I happen to believe that anybody who wants to be president, prime minister of any country who thinks that they should be ruling the world and telling everybody what the laws and things should be has to be a bit psychopathic. And that's the same for the left, the right, the center. People on this who were talking about Obama, oh, I hate Obama, oh, I hate Biden, I hate uh, Trump, I hate this and that. They're all psychopaths. It doesn't matter how much you love them. They've all got a bit of it. It's a spectrum, isn't it? And they're all a little bit towards psychopathy. That's my opinion anyway. Same with the prime ministers. Same in every country, Trudeau and whoever. And some of them are worse than others, of course. But, to, I mean, how many of you grew up thinking, I should rule the world? I'm pretty sure Meghan might have done but most of us have not done that. Anyway, that was supposed to be the thing about Megan and uh, Spotify, and we read out those reviews. I hope you guys found that interesting. Keep on watching. There's loads of stuff about Megan and all that. Hit the likes, uh, and thank you all for your support. Um, you're, you're great, and you keep me company, and it's lovely.